Hello folks, today we're going to look at cryogenic barrels, a lot of questions on those. Bob Serva from Fusion Firearms. Uh, today, what we're going to do, we've been getting an awful lot of questions. Uh, you know, we do manufacture a lot of barrels, uh, 1911 barrels and such. We're getting a lot of questions on uh, the cryogenic process, okay? Oh, should I have my barrel cryogenically done? Well, what is it? What is cryogenics and what's it really worth, okay? Um, cryogenics is a fancy name, all right? Uh, if you were... If you've been a, an engineer in metallurgy or if you have been a tool maker, um, you'll, you'll probably definitely come across cryogenics, which in the, in the old days when I was coming up through the apprenticeship, uh, I am a journeyman tool maker, uh, it, 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 cryogenics, we didn't call it that. That was kind of a new fancy name probably in the last maybe 10 years or so. People have been calling it that. But what it was always called is aging aging process of materials and what, what we'll go over today is is what that really is and and what cause and effect it has for the cost involved the costs are quite substantial to have a, a barrel done cryogenically and and what is the process you know what is the process and and uh, what's it going to actually do for you what's the outcome um, you know obviously this process has some merit Okay, and I'm not saying for barrel applications, but I'm saying in, in, in the mechanical world because it's been being used for years. And to simply put it, um, a, the aging process of material or cryogenics, as they call it today, is deep freezing. Okay, and what that means is um, they're putting in generally a nitrogen uh, a nitrogen bath down. They usually have containers that go tanks that go down into the in, into the floor of a of a production facility. Uh, a lot of times, this will be run right along with the people that do heat treatments. And um, it, what they'll do is deep freeze to over 300 degrees negative uh, Fahrenheit, like 190 so centigrade. And they'll do it multiple times, bring it back up to room temperature, deep freeze it again, maybe do it two or three times. Generally, about a, it's a three-time uh, step process. But again, w what does that really do to the material? What, why would you want that for your 1911 barrel? And, you know, to, to cut right to the point, I wouldn't want it for my 1911 barrel, okay? Because it doesn't have any real purpose for, for a pistol barrel. Um, We'll go through what, what cryogenics claims to do. Um, when you look at very highly stable metal materials, which means I'm talking cold room, uh, clean room environment materials that you are going to have to have a cold room or, or a clean room, you know, a, a temperature controlled room to check when you get to those tolerances which again, those tolerances are, are you know, much smaller than compared to most type of barrel manufacturing. Now, um, we, we do work in the, in the tents, okay, which isn't point, you know, point zero 0.01, which, you know, if you're into the carpentry and that, that's what you think of as a tent. No, a tent and machining, you know, is point zero 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 one okay which is a tenth of a thousandth basically and then you'll go to the millionth scale which you know if you're building gauges anybody who's a tool maker or a gauge maker you know there's guys that that you know people that do that i mean they'll be building gauges to 20 millionths 50 millionths um you know and you say well how do you even check that again you need to be, have electro limit gauges you have to have special uh type of equipment to check those things and you have to have it in a stabilized uh, area where you're going to have stable temperature at all times. Usually it's 68 degrees is the standard. And so say you were making a gauge, a, a simple step gauge that you're using for, you know, indicating and then you're going to check your part. One thing that through the years, engineers and tool makers, machinists alike, they've, they've all found out that um, stabilized material doesn't move and you know you know people say well Bob this barrel's not moving well if I if I leave it here and I freeze it at, at 32 degrees 
the 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 size of this barrel in the in the tenth wise or even maybe even thousands wise will change if I bring it up to uh, say 120 degrees. So you are going to get some different changes due to temperature um, in, in just the material itself. So say you had a gauge that you know you need the tolerance to be two tenths. Okay, again, 0 0.0002, okay, real small, real small. You, you can't even see it, okay? So, you know, again, just to give you a visual, um, you know, say like most people's hair, most people's hair, uh, if you just go do a thousands, okay, which there's 10 tenths in a thousands, all right, most people's hair will be about 8 thousands thick when you, when you, if you mite your hair. So, so... You're taking a hair and say trying to split that, you know, eight or ten times to, to get down to where, a, you know, a tenth would be. So um, that's just to give you kind of a visual of really what you're working with. You're working with things that you can hardly see. Um, generally, you won't see that in, in most most items people are using and you say why well because most people say you're using a camera well that camera could be out at you know negative 20 degrees out taking shots of a polar bear or it could be you know uh, down in the bahamas at you know 110 degrees taking pictures of somebody on the beach so you know you can't make something that ha that has to function within that such critical tolerance if you do it's not going to work within the parameters of, of you know that that product is going to see through its lifetime possibly so again these type of processes are for real specific type uses um and again what what one thing that aging was is they found one of the most stable materials for making say gauges uh, was cast iron uh, a cast iron would be very stable. It would it, it wouldn't move with with uh, you know temperature changes as fast or as quickly or as much as as other materials. Um, and the other thing people noticed is that it, it, again aging. Why they call it aging process because they used to actually years ago before you know the, the nitrogen baths were were around and and actual cryogenics if you want to call it the modern day name of it it, it they used to actually leave steel out in in the weather okay they would take steel and actually leave it in the field and as it froze and as it came back up to temperature through the seasons and rusted and everything else um, that material would become more stable so when you manufactured something from it, uh, it wouldn't move as much with temperature changes and things of that may as drastically as, as something that wasn't stabilized. So, you know, where, where, what application does it really have? Well, you know, our bores, yes, they are, you know, air gauged within tents. Um, uh, but again, this gun's not going to operate under those, those circumstances that, you know, the, the cryogenics is going to actually give it much of a benefit. So again, as a pistol shooter, um, you know, most pistol shooters are looking at either, you know, shooting targets at 25 foot, 50 yards, something of that nature. You're looking at, you know, if maybe if I was looking at application for bench rest, and I was in the top 10 percentile of bench rest shooters in the country, I'd say, yeah, maybe I'd try it because it, it might give me a little bit of an edge. So again, those are things that they're reference points, but again, I don't really see the application for 99% of all pistol shooters where cryogenics is really gonna help you out. Um, so I, again, you know, what, what are the benefits that are claimed with cryogenics? Well, when I look at, you know, simple things that you can read about it, you know, they, they look at Im, Im, improved wear resistance, which, okay, maybe a little, maybe a little, um, you know, but if your barrel costs you, you know, under $200 to buy a brand new match barrel and your cryogenic process costs $300, then by the time this barrel gets to a point where it's worn out, it's cheaper to buy another barrel. It's more cost effective to go that way than, you know, you might save an extra, whatever, 3,000 shots or something, you know, maybe 2,000. I don't really know what that factor is, but what you're going to save on this end and what you paid for, you're not getting it out of the, the mechanics that it's, that it's giving you. So that's one thing that's claimed. 
And, you know, the other one of the other things is cracking. Well, yes, if you have a product that's having a lot of issues with thermal cracking, um, you know, due to due to shock or, or thermal conditions. And, you know, there are applications for that. What 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 would one be? Well, say like the, the valves, the valves in your car. OK, why? Because that car engine block may be going from negative 20 when it starts up in the morning, you know, up to. Uh, 185, 200 degrees, you know, 300 degrees running that thing, that, that engine, and that valve is being smashed back and forth on springs, you know, thousands and thousands of times as, as you're driving it. So that is going through constant fatigue and constant wear, where your, your barrel really isn't doing that. Even if you're a target shooter and you're shooting all day long, you're never going to see that type of constant fatigue. Um, that you will in some other mechanisms like a car engine, like a valve. So again, that even though it may give some particular uh, benefits, you know, to that that mechanical mechanism for you as a pistol shooter, really not going to do a whole lot for you. So I, I don't see that being being really a, a factor also in cryogenics. The other is let's see here. The others improving uh, the surface. Uh, coefficient, frictional coefficient. I don't see that either, really, <clears throat> because the, the the actual surface finish um, generally is either done prior to the cryogenic process or done right after. And what do I mean done after? You'll stabilize, you'll basically say make a fixture or a gauge, or even if it was say some high tolerance pin, you, you'll, you'll have that ground to a high, very high tolerance um, you'll probably leave a slight bit of material on it for cleaning up. You're going to go through the cryogenic process, and then you're going to bring it back and do a skim grind to finish that product to the to the proper size that you need, or or even hand lap it. Sometimes you know they, there's requirements for hand lapping of gauges, bringing them below two tenths of a of a thousandth. So uh, again, all that plays into factor with certain types of mechanical uh, components. But I, again, do not see it at all for any type of form of pistol barrel where you're going to gain the benefit for the cost and expense that's going into it. So, you know, I, again, I'm not a real big fan of cryogenics. We're getting a lot of calls on cryogenics like, oh, you know, can can you send this barrel out before you send it to me and have it done, you know, cryogenically? I'm, <laughs> it, it's just not worth, worth your money. I'm just telling you right now. You're not going to see any difference at your 50 yards or anything like that with a handgun. Um, again, possibly at bench rest level, because there's guys that are shooting, you know, uh, a mile or more now. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's incredible some of the accuracies uh, folks are getting. Um, they, you know, people have worked their loads and worked their their their, their custom guns to to shoot so good at those those long long distances. So at that. Yeah, maybe it probably still gives you a better mental edge than a a mechanical edge, but it, it's something to consider, I would say, at that point. But again, for most handgun applications, no, you're really not going to gain much much traction or much benefit out of it. So um, again, for myself, I would say no on the cryogenics um, and, and move on from there. And really, those are all the, the real benefits on when you look at, you know, stabilizing a product or going through the expense to age, cryogenically stabilize a product. So um, when you look at the handgun applications, it's very, very slim, very slim. And most people will never, ever um, even know the difference in their shooting or accuracy or longevity of the product by going through and making that extra expense for that process. So we just wanted to clarify that and, and go over that with you guys today because we have been getting so many questions on it. And again, we thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you again at FusionFirearms.com.